I'm going to talk about YAC capsulotomy. You might know, you might think, well, we know that. We do this for ages. Uh, but uh, maybe after my presentation, you've changed your mind. Now, as I just have 15 minutes, I, um, well, I have a pre-recorded movie I wanted to start with first to save some time and then to discuss a couple of things in detail. So it's an eight minute movie as an introduction into what I'm very much interested in. But we need some sound, actually. This is with uh, sound with movie. One of the YAG laser treatment options is the cruciate pattern technique. The YAG laser is used to create a cross pattern which allows the capsule flaps to retract out of the visual axis. Care must be taken to aim the laser beam carefully to avoid pitting the optic. IOL pits in the optical axis can lead to disturbing light effects. This lens has certainly lost all of its premium properties. As a result, the patient may well have to suffer with this for the rest of his or her life. Another fundamental source of error is performing the treatment without a contact lens. The YAG beam is delivered at a convergence angle of 16 degrees from the laser aperture, which should be further focused through an Abraham contact lens. If not, we do not concentrate the energy at an optimal focal point, but rather in a broad focus. These two pictures show quite impressively how this entire IOL is practically pierced right through. An alternative approach is the circular or can opener technique where a round opening in the posterior capsule is created. If pits are created they usually are not a disturbance because they are away from the optical center and visual axis. The freed capsule lobe is left to float in the vitreous body. It is not uncommon for this to remain in the area of the optical axis fully oscillating with all eye movements. Fortunately not all patients will perceive this capsular remnant. However some will be severely impaired by it as you can see in the following example. Before firing the laser let us first take a look at some basic physics. The YAG laser produces a coherent, monochromatic laser beam with a wavelength of 1064 nanometers. The laser exits through the objective lens together with the two red aiming beams at a convergence angle of 16 degrees. A YAG contact lens increases this convergence angle to 24 degrees. On the one hand they serve to stabilize the eye and on the other they have the function of a burning glass to further increase the energy density in the laser focus to achieve plasma formation. The mode of action of a YAG laser is to bring a small amount of energy into a tiny focus for an extremely short duration of time. The resulting power generated is high enough to strip electrons from their atoms causing ionization and an optical breakdown, which can be seen as a plasma formation with a core temperature of 4000 degrees centigrade. Let me demonstrate this in action using dry ice. The fog produced makes the process quite visible as you can clearly see here. Now with an awareness of the high degree of temperature anticipated at the laser focus it would make sense to maintain a sufficiently safe distance between the IOL and the plasma formation.
Many lasers include a manually controlled offset allowing you to move the treatment beam posteriorly towards vitreous by 0.1 to 0.5 mm. I personally do not use this option but focus the laser manually 1.5 to 2 mm behind the capsule by moving the slit lamp towards the patient. Using this technique IOL damage is virtually impossible. In this 3D animation you can observe the formation of gas bubbles. The initial gas bubbles are highly reflective at the time of plasma formation so that a large part of the pressure wave is bounced back retrograde towards the lens capsule. This phenomenon is called plasma shield which leads to photo disruption of the capsule. And we can observe this phenomenon in another 3D animation. A capsule opening centered on the optical axis is achieved. Ideally, it already has the shape of a pentagon or hexagon. Now I will show you the effect from the surgeon's point of view. Here you can see the aiming beams in focus directly on the capsule. They are overlapping forming one circle. Now pushing the focus about 1.5 mm further posterior behind the lens into the vitreous. Two red aiming beams are now clearly visible on the posterior capsule. An energy level of 2 mJ should be enough to create an initial opening and after a few shots we see this intermediate result. The following images were not created in Photoshop but with the cooperation of this patient who without complaining moved back and forth several times between the YAG laser and the slit lamp camera enabling us to capture a photographic record of this real life situation. I will now show you another photo animation of the procedure followed by real life surgery. Years after performing a YAG laser treatment you will often see these kind of soemering formations at the edges of the capsular opening. You can easily avoid this by investing some extra time. You should carefully clean the surface of the capsule of lens epithelium by applying a number of low energy laser pulses as you can see in this animation. This will result in clean and perfectly curled capsule edges. Assuming a perfectly sized rexus without the risk of a vitreous prolapse into the anterior chamber I try to achieve a posterior capsule opening between 5 and 6 millimeters. Thank you very much. Um, a lot of information, and uh, not much, I'm not, not finished yet. Uh, I have a course book, a handout. I, I don't have one for everybody. Whoever wants to come into the Quantel booth afterwards, I will be there at uh, 2.30 p.m. and can give you a personal one if you are interested uh, in. Right, now, I have six minutes left, and I would like to use the, the time um, and to show you as much as possible. Now, I, I think that if you sell a patient a premium lens, you shouldn't leave it like this. It's your fingerprint. And this is what I see very often. And uh, I think this, this is a case where there was no, there was no PCO, it has been done. These, these are court cases. Um, this is, for instance, a floater with, uh, was done with a circular uh, technique that can be extremely annoying to patients. And here in particular, you see cases where a contact lens was not used. I don't call that pits, I call that drills. You create a drills through the entire um, IOL. And I think now in these days, where everybody uses digital photography, you might end up in a court case with, a, with shitty work like this, but you can avoid it. 
easily. I showed you. And uh, let me show you a few more cases. Uh, if you do it primarily, I've showed you the technique. The, we have a new lens now um, um, with the broader diameter. We have a, um, the new laser has a posterior offset of two millimeters. And there is a group of patients that can have benefit from your knowledge. I call that a reshape. I'll just go through the cases right now to save time. This is an unhappy patient. I did a reshape. Um, and uh, yeah, the technique, patients have, have to sit comfortable. Patients with low, short legs uh, have problems. I've created this wooden structure. If you look at your contact lenses, they are dusty and scratchy like this. I'm sure at any university department where there are 20 juniors, pick the lenses and look at, this is not good for, the, for quality. A contact lens has to look like that and can be easily achieved. I describe it in my brochure. Um, if you do the treatment, uh, air bubbles uh, have to be avoided. Uh, yeah, this looks nice, uh, um, but I tell my patients it's better to leave it when you come for laser treatment. We have now new lenses. Uh, the upper image shows you um, PCO, the slip lens. The lower one shows you the image with an Abraham contact lens. I thought with ocular instruments how to improve it, and we came out with a lens with a bigger diameter that is available now. Furthermore, there is a lens in development where we have decentered the plus lens to create a uh, prism. Then you are even able to treat deep set eyes, for instance, or patients that quease the eyes and where you have the, the Bell's phenomenon. Um, yeah, it's called the Brussels lens, uh, like the poor thing lens uh, for vitriolysis. Uh, and, uh, yeah, you bring energy into the eye. Be careful what you do. This is a reshape. This is, uh, this is a lovely case, actually. This patient came to my practice, said I don't see the periphery. And on top of that, I'm suffering from a floater. I did a reshape. Unfortunately, you see the damage of the IOL inside. But some people might say, well, we've done this ever. The small diameter doesn't matter. But uh, the, the Optos image tells you the difference. And finally, this image, I took a movie. It's impressing. If you examine patients, you, you don't have to say, look at the light, but uh, you have to change your strategy of uh, examination. You have to look up and look down to see what is going on in the vitreous. So more reshapes. These are patients that wait for good laser treatment done in your practice. They are even more than premium PCO cases. Another reshape, uh, no, another reshape. Maybe this makes you interested. Then this is a premium lens, and it has not the properties. It can't achieve the properties the lens has this way. So I, I, um, and this is how they look in my practice usually when uh, I do the case myself, and this is how. A, if you put in multifocal lenses, I'm not a fan of multifocal lenses, but if you put them in, I think it, the patient deserves it, that it looks like that. And it's easy. Thank you for your interest. <laughs>